welcome to another video of algebra where we're going to add and subtract with fractions so like i said in my previous video we have climbed and climbed that mountain learning about um, simplifying of brackets foiling uh, three brackets multiplying with each other after that we we revised the grade nine factorization um, then we added the grade 10 factorization to that, the grouping, um, the Chacha trinomials. So now we've got all that knowledge and then we applied it by normal fractions where we had to uh, use factorization to simplify further. Then after that we did multiplication and division sums and now we are with adding and subtracting. So please, please note the difference. Um, sorry, it's a bit noisy. I am here at school. So, um, and I've got a, a free lesson, so I'm going to quickly make this video for you. Um, yeah, so just please make sure with the adding and subtracting, just to quickly show you, it's where we have a plus and the minus in between our terms. Okay, so we are adding and subtracting and no longer just with normal numbers, but with fractions. All right, so we'll get to them now. So I've, I've written out the steps to follow how to tackle these sums and these um like i said to my class this is the hardest that you would get and these are just there's a few steps that you just need to remember um of what to follow all right step one is make sure that every term is in a fraction format so if there's just a number um, and it's not in a fraction you're going to force it into a fraction by putting it over one Step two, we're going to factorize where possible, um, mostly with the denominator, but it could be that, that you have to factorize with the numerator to cancel out towards the end, but you will see when we get the, to the next step. Step three, find a common LCD. If a variable or bracket is the same between the two terms, take out the one with the highest exponent. Okay, step four. Um, what you do with the bottom, you must do with the top, but as we go along, I will show you how to do that. Step five, add the numerators together. So the tops add the tops together, but keep the denominator the same. I always say you worked so hard to get it the same, keep it the same. And step six is simplify the top. Sometimes you will be able to factorize again as to enable you to further simplify. Okay, so you're going to simplify and then you're going to really look at your sum and say, is there anywhere where I can factorize so that I can further simplify? All right, so let's look at the examples. So step one, remember, we're going to force each and every term into a fraction. By doing so, then you can easily see what is the denominators so i've got a one a one and a two so the lowest common denominator that is common between them all would be a two because i am able to take this one and by timesing only making it a two this one i didn't do anything to it so one what i do at the bottom i must do on the top so um let me just add it there, just in the beginning. So what you do at the bottom, you have to do on top. And 1 times 2 is 2. Plus 2 times a is 2a. Minus. Now very, very, very important. Very important. Can I say it again? Very, very, very important. Is this negative over here. He is a naughty, naughty negative. Because this is where most of you make your mistakes. I always say, when you bring your fraction off its high horse, that negative has to distribute to both terms over there. So it's not just going to go to the first term. It's going to go to both terms. And that's where most of you make your mistakes by saying it's negative 2a minus 1. Where in fact, when we simplify, it's going to be 2 plus 2a minus 2a plus 1 and not a negative 1. Okay, so very, very important. I always say when the fraction gets off his high horse, down, the negative, remember, has to distribute to um, both terms, not just the first term over there. So it's negative 2a and a negative times a negative is a positive 1. And that, please don't drop your numerator, uh, sorry, your denominator 
um, as you go always tag it along bring it along now we're going to simplify plus 2a minus 2a is 0 and 2 plus 1 is 3 so your simplified answer is 3 over 2 all right so if you didn't make that you would have gotten 2 minus 1 which is a half which then would be wrong all right let's move on to the next one First step, make them both a fraction. They are already. Next step, I'm going to find a common LCD. And somehow I put it all over one already. Between two and six, which one is the lowest common denominator? So which one can I say multiply? So I always start with the biggest one. Can you take the biggest one, which is six, and then you ask yourself, can the other one go into six? Yes, it can. So we're going to keep our six. And then we've got an X and an X, so you can just take out one X. And there is a Y visible, although it's not there, we have to take it out. But remember, because remember, what do we do to this to get it to that? Okay, so we have to multiply. All right, so yeah, can you see we didn't do anything? It stayed exactly the same. So the 5 is going to stay exactly the same. But over here, we made the 2 into a 6, so we have to multiply with 3. The x is already there, and then we also have to multiply with a y. All right, so what we do at the bottom, we have to do on top. So yeah, that negative is somehow going to be forced in there because I'm going to write it like this. Okay, so the negative 3y forces me to multiply it with both terms. All right, again, we're going to further simplify then. 5 minus 3xy and a negative times a positive is a negative. 3 times 2 is 6y. All over 6xy. Can I further simplify anything on the top here? No, because they are none of them are like terms. Can I go and cancel out the xy and the xy? No, no, no. Why not? Because we've got multiple terms here as the um, numerator. All right. So this is where you'll actually end. All right. Okay. Next sum. Okay. We, we need to get an LCD. Are they all a fraction? No. Let's make that one a fraction so that we are forced to see... Um, the lowest common denominator okay so i've got we have to have between the numbers i've got a four a four a one and a one if there's nothing there's a one so the lowest number there is a four then i've got a x a x squared so you if there's two variables that's the same like there and there then we take the one with the highest exponent then there's also y's, there's y to the power 1, y to the power 1, so I'm just going to take out 1y. And that is your LCD. Now we're going to start. What did I have to add to this to get to that? I had to, oh, sorry, not add, what did I multiply with? I multiplied with 4 and an x, because you see there's an x, there's an x squared, and the y is already there. What you do at the bottom, you do on top which will give you 2 times 4 is 8x. Plus, what did I do here? Mm, absolutely nothing. So I'm going to keep my brackets. Let's stick to the black color. Um, 7x plus 1. Although I know the positive won't affect any of those signs, I'm just sticking because of um, routine. So let's just stick to our routine. Okay, over here I multiplied with, the 4 was already there, x squared y and then what you do at the bottom you do on top let me just write that over there times x squared y and so it's minus five and then you can write uh, oh, sorry um let me write what i'm going to multiply with first x squared y times with that five x y plus and with this one, to get to that, I had to multiply exactly with what is there. Because 1 times that will give you that. So plus 1 times that will give you 4x squared y. 4x squared y. Sorry, my pen is still a little bit not all that awake. All right. And now we're going to, now we've done that. We've worked so hard to get our LCD the same. We're going to keep our LCD and we're going to simplify the numerators, the top. 
So then I'm left with 8x plus 7x plus 1 minus 5x to the power 3y squared plus 4x squared y all over 4x squared y. Can I immediately go and cancel those? No, no, no. Why? Because there's multiple terms there on top. So 8x plus 7x is 15x plus 1. And are these two like terms? No, because this one's got a little sneaky 3 there. So it's minus 5x to the power 3y plus 4x squared y. So this is a bit of a very ugly answer over 4x squared y. Okay, so I know you're tempted to cancel those out, but you are not allowed. Okay, off to the next sum. Now we're going to start with common brackets. Okay, step one, make everything in a, a fraction. Step two um, was uh, factorize where needed, then LCD. So again, step one, everything is a fraction. Step two, it is already factorized. There's no way I can factorize. Step three, or next step, is find a common LCD. So with the brackets, if there's an x plus 3 alone over there, you can bundle it together like that. So then I'm going to take out x plus 3. There's 1, 2, and 3. You must always take the 1 out with the highest exponent. Okay, so you can take out, because they're the same, you take out 1, but you take the 1 with the highest exponent. And now we have to go and see, what did I multiply the x plus 3 with to the power 1 to get x plus 3 to the power 3? 3. Can you see that I multiplied with x plus 3 to the power of 2? Because if you keep your same base, which is x plus 3, and you add the exponents, you'll be left with this. Over here, I multiplied with 1x plus 3, because now I've got 2 and 1 makes 3. And this one, I didn't multiply with anything, or I multiplied with 1, it just stays the same. Okay, oopsie, sorry. Let's get another color, yay. All right, so yeah, 1 times x plus 3 squared will just give you x plus 3 squared plus 2 times x plus 3 plus 3. Okay, next step is to simplify. I'm going to do the quick way, x squared plus 6x plus 9. So remember, you expand that bracket. Um, x plus 3 times x plus 3 and you foil it out and you'll be left with this okay so just to show you I do it the quick way where you take um, sorry the front square it the back square it and then the middle part you 3 times x and you always double it which gives you 6x and then I'm going to distribute that 2 in there 2x plus 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 all over x plus 3 to the power of 3. Sometimes my students, they, they drop the denominator as they go along because it gets so hard to write that all, that somewhere they drop it and then they pick it up again. People, please, you will have to ma get that cramp in your hand because you have to keep on writing your, your the full fraction the whole time. Okay, then you're left with x squared plus 6x plus 2x gives you plus 8x. And 9 plus 6 is 15 and plus 18. All over x plus 3 to the power of 3. And then I just want to quickly see whether I can factorize this because it is a trinomial. So remember the fifth step, or I don't know where we are now, but the second last step is just to see whether you can factorize again so that you can further simplify. So I just want to see x squared plus 6 plus 2 is plus 8, 9 plus 6 is 15 and 18. Okay, um, so you can get 6 times 3, 6 times 3 won't give you 8, um, uh, 9 times 2 won't give you 8. So that is where you're going to leave it. I do, I'm almost double sure that that won't be able to factorize further. I'm just going to double check in my calculator. And yes, there is a way that you can check in your calculator, but please, you must be able to do it yourself. Okay, now it gives you 
a very horrible answer. All right, so that is where you're going to leave your answer. All right, over here, now we're going to start with the factorization. So step one, see where you can factorize. And I can factorize over there. And that is the difference of two perfect squares. So please, if you don't know your factorization, it's going to come and bite you in the bum if you don't know what to do. Okay, I'm going to factorize that. The difference of two perfect squares, two brackets, that's exactly the same. And, um, at, uh, sorry, two brackets are exactly the same, plus and minus in each one. And now, I'm going to take out an LCD. And I'm going to ask myself, okay, I'm going to bundle this together. And I need an X plus Y. And I need a Y minus X. So you go to each one and you write them down. Then the last one, a y plus x. Do you think that this is the same as this one over here? I think it is. Because whether you say 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2, it will give you the same answer. All I did is I swapped these around. And because the two signs are both positives, it helps, it heals or it has the same value. All right. Okay, so I don't have to write it again. And if you are a little bit scared, um, sorry, you can just for yourself go and write it here to make it the same x plus y. Okay, to know that it was already taken out there. Now you go to the first term over here and you ask yourself, what did I have to add to get to these two brackets with the LCD in terms of the LCD over there? So it's got an x plus y, but it doesn't have the y minus x. So I need to multiply with the y minus x. Okay, so I'm just going to clean up again. I'm just going to reverse it just to have shown you. And then oopsie, I'm going to multiply this side with y minus x. What you do at the bottom, you have to do on top. Yeah, you can keep it within brackets like that. Then over here, when you look at this one, over here, to get to this, I really didn't do anything. So that will be exactly the same. Does it? Okay, so you just times it with one. All right, let's do that. So the x has to multiply with y minus x plus and nothing to the x squared all right next step simplify x y minus x squared plus x squared all over x plus y y minus x further simplify those two terms over there so you're left with x y minus x squared plus x squared falls away over x plus y, y minus x. So be careful for those brackets. You don't have to take them out twice. So if you've got, let's say, x plus um, a k and a k plus x, those are exactly the same value for that bracket. So you can just swap these two around to make it x plus k as well. Okay, so with that one, you'll see later on where we take out a sign, we take out a negative. With these ones, you don't have to do it because because they're both positives, you can just swap them around. All right, next step. Let's get a better color than that. We're going to factorize and factorize. And luckily, you can see that they are both trinomials, hopefully. So 7 over to brackets x splits they are different they're both oh sorry different first one's a plus minus and it's the oopsie always write the biggest number first four and three plus four minus three gives you a positive one and a positive four times a negative three does give you that negative 12. always test your factorization you don't want to make a mistake in the beginning okay they're different the first one's a plus and a minus and four times two Plus 4 minus 2 gives you a positive 
2 and if you multiply them it gives you a negative 8. Okay, now we factorized. Next step is to get an LCD. So you're going to start. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to write it down. X plus 4. Then I'm going to go to the next one. Do I have it? No. So I must write it down. Then I go to the next one. Oh, I've got it. So I don't have to write them down. Then I go to the next one. X minus 2. Coolios. All right. So now we're going to ask ourselves, how did we get from this to this? Which one isn't there? I've got the x plus 4. I've got the x minus 3. Aha, I need the x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply the 7 with x minus 2. Then, if I had to do another color, how did I get from this to this? You check yourself. I've got an x plus 4. I've got an x minus 2. So the one that's needed there is the x minus 3. And I'm going to multiply the 6 with x minus 3. I hope the color helps a bit to see what to do. Alrighty. So the 7 times by x minus 2 minus 6 x minus 3. Luckily that negative we are forced to distribute with the 6 into the bracket to both terms. And that's all over x plus 4 x minus 3 x minus 2. Okay, let's simplify that top part. 7x minus 14 minus 6x plus 18 all over. Cramp in the hand, cramp in the hand. I know. x plus 4, x minus 3, and x minus 2. So this simplifies. 7x minus 6x is x. Minus 14 plus 18 gives you a positive 4. Yay, yay, yay. Look at that. Cramp in the hand. Cramp in the hand. Keep on going. Cramp in the hand. And now, when the x plus 4 is alone on top, you are more than welcome to bundle them together. And can you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Those two can cancel out. And if there's nothing left on top, there is a 1 over x minus 3, x minus 2. Oh, very good. And there's your final answer. All right, step one. Is everything a fraction? Yes, it is. Step two, factorize. Factorize. What is this? Hmm, don't forget the sum and difference of two cubes. What we've learned this year always has two terms, and both terms are perfectly cube rootable. This one is a trinomial. So let's get started. This one over here, do you remember? Short bracket, long bracket. Minus 1 over, and that is a trinomial. They are both the same, so it's going to be x plus y and x plus y. You can test it quickly. x times x is x squared plus xy plus xy. Oh, no. This one can't. Okay, so for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write it over again. And just hold on a little bit because that one is not, in fact, a trinomial, a perfect tr trinomial that you can factorize. So we're just holding on. Let's first do the left-hand side. So if the, Q, the negative comes down and then two positives are left, Cube root of x to the power 3 is x. Cube root of y to the power 3 is y. Take the x, square it. Take the y, square it. Multiply the two together. x times y is xy. Well, well, will you look at that. These two terms are now exactly the same. Okay, now we need to get an LCD. You're going to start. Start with that one. Write it down. X minus Y. Then that one. X squared plus XY plus Y squared. Then that one. Oh, I've got it already, so I don't have to duplicate. Okay, what did I do from this term to get to this? 
absolutely nothing. What did I do to this term to get to this? Can you see I added that x minus y, so I have to multiply with x minus y into that with the negative 1. So then I'm going to be left with x minus x plus y all over. Cramp in the hand, cramp in the hand. But I need to write it down. Okay, and then lastly, the x minus x falls away and you're left with a beautiful positive x minus y, x squared plus xy plus y squared. Don't forget your LCD to drag it along. And then we're done with that sum. Okay, next one. Factorize. Can you see it is a trinomial? And so I'm going to quickly do this one. Why I wrote it down is I just want to quickly show you something that you are allowed to do. So the A splits, they are different. The first one's a plus and a minus and two times one. Plus two minus one gives you a positive one. Positive two times negative one gives you negative two. All right. Minus A over A plus one. Okay, we can bundle that together like that. So now just be careful, just to make your life a little bit easier, always try and simplify each fraction before you carry on finding your LCD. Because if you had to go, you would say, okay, I need to take out an A plus 2, I A minus 1, and an A plus 1. So it will be a lot, and that makes your, your numerators a lot to simplify. Can you see with this fraction that there is one term on top and one term at the bottom? So you are more than welcome before you continue to cancel out that those two A plus 2s. And then you are left with, okay, so we're going to get the LCD as well, A minus 1 and A plus 1. And yeah, what did I get? I added an A plus 1, so the A is going to multiply with A plus 1 minus A. And A plus 1, what did I get here? A minus 1. And that is much quicker to simplify than if you had to have um, three terms there at the bottom. A squared minus A squared falls away. A plus A is 2A over A minus 1. A plus 1. And then you're done. Can you uh, foil out those brackets? You can. You can leave it exactly like that. That is perfectly correct. All right. And I just want to quickly, quickly explain to you um, to make your sum a little bit easier, to, can, to get a lowest common denominator with not taking out so many brackets. Sometimes you can look at your expression given and say, but... Wait a minute, if I just swap these two around and I change the sign, then I will have what is in the other bracket. Okay, so if you have a look over here, sorry, if you were going to factorize that um, as a difference of two perfect squares, then you would say 3 minus x and 3 plus x. So now they're very, very similar to this x minus 3. But this one over here, the positive x over here is a negative x over here. And the negative 3 is a positive 3. So what's going to happen is we're going to swap the sign, take out a negative, And then the signs here are going to change from a positive to a negative, And the negative x squared to a positive. Okay, so it only affects either the bottom or the top, so you can change either the bottom or the top, but not both at the same time. All right, so now I've got 2x over x minus 3 minus x plus 1 over, I'm going to swap them around and change their signs. That positive, uh, sorry, that positive x was a negative, so it becomes a positive and the positive 9 becomes a negative 9. Now we can start saying, all right, I'm going to factorize. I'm 
that x minus 3, x plus 3. And now by doing that, I can only, I only need to take out, sorry, an x minus 3 and x plus 3. Okay, which one needed there? There was an x minus 3, so I'm going to add an x plus 3. And over here, they were both, but very important that naughty negative has to distribute to both terms. So please make sure you either put a bracket around or that you remember that the negative goes to all the terms thereafter. Then I'll have 2x. Sorry, this pen of mine is really giving up. 2x squared plus 6x minus x minus 1 all over x minus 3, x plus 3. And if you further simplify that, 2x squared has no like terms to simplify with. Plus 6x minus x is plus 5x. And, oopsie, let's try that again. 5x minus 1 all over x minus 3, x plus 3. There we go. This is your final answer.